And we're here again, guys, and we have Deshanka Green, Mary Ware, and the man himself, Mr. Travis Dowdy, and backed by popular demand, Mr. Dwight B. Banks. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. We're here with a special stylist edition. And what that is, we've had questions coming in from stylists also that's concerned about the industry. You know, I get them all day long when I go around and visit salons and um, service and salons for my product. So we're here to answer some of you guys' questions. We had such a fabulous time here at Purple Door the first time around, so we had to ask Dwight, can we use this salon again? And um, he's most graciously agreed and furnished you know, a little <laughs> cocktail, <laughs> just a I'm little cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll we let them introduce themselves. The cocktail. <laughs> yes, we can. Yeah. I'll let them introduce themselves again and we'll get right to it. Okay, my name is Deshanka Green and I'm the owner of the Essence Hair Studio and also an educator for the Flying Essentials. And I'm Mary Ware from the Red Carpet Hair Studio in Dunwoody, Georgia, owner operator extraordinaire. And good evening, I'm Dwight Eubanks from the Purple Door Salon in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump right into some questions, guys. And a lot of the questions today are coming from stylists around the country. So uh, Rakia King from Chicago wants to know, how do you retail more effectively? How do you uh, retail more effectively, guys? That's a good question. It is. That's a good question. Well, you are the... Um, retail expert and creator of your own product so yeah but that's a, that's a good question especially in our in our in our industry in mm -hmm. african-american salons is um how do you retail more effectively well, um, first of all you got to have it in the store to retail <laughs> yeah. I know this most of our salons yeah. don't have retail in them mm -hmm. so that's the first step is getting retail products on the shelf Two and then explaining to your clients what they need to go home with you know, because we know that you're going to use some hairspray. Mm -hmm. We're conditioned to use some oil or mm -hmm. some moisturizer mm -hmm. of some kind. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get it whether you get it from the salon or whether you get it from Sally's or any other your close nearby stores. So the first thing you've got to do is to educate your clients and tell them what's recommended for their hair. Because you have so many different product lines in your line. You have so, diff so many different things that you can use. But most important, you got to use the correct product. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the dialogue. Instead of just sitting around talking about who did who and who mm -hmm. doing who, let's have some education and yeah. some dialogue about what your needs are about your hair. And just That's, that's what I was going to ask you. Because if we get it in, if you guys get the product in, if you still with that once I finish curling her mindset, mm -hmm. she can go on out the door, you have to recondition yourself a little bit as well. You got to recondition your, your, your mindset. What do you think? I agree. And then don't be afraid as you're working on that client's hair. Show them what you're using. Don't be afraid that they're not going to come back. Show them how you use it and then keep everything stocked. Make sure that presentation is everything. So keep your shelves dusted and stocked up and looking really, really pleasant for that client. Hold on, no. yeah, and push no, the Hold on. Oh, no. I had to laugh on it because when I used to retail uh, Design Essential um, back before I got my own. I was a big designer user. Shout out to Mr. McBride. I love you guys over there. But <laughs> I thought when I had a few pieces on the shelf, it was going to give the impression that it was selling out. <laughs> totally wrong impression. It gives the impression you're out of stock. <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, I was like, no, nah, just leave a few up there so they can demand it and they can ask for it. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Keep your shelves stocked. Yes. Stop. Oh, that was so funny. Yeah. Create some cute little packages also. That, that would probably help. Winter packages, summer packages, workout packages. That helps sell. Yeah, so change your mindset when it comes to retailing. Understand it's a separate business. Definitely separate your money. Yes. Yeah, that was a big aha moment. Well, you know, for, for us, you know, retail is really the gravy of the salon. And, and, and the average salon, it's just like a restaurant. Restaurants don't really make the money off the food. They make the money off of the bar. So it's, an, it's up to the, the waiter and the waiter staff to push a cocktail with your dinner. Mm -hmm. And really that is what should pay your, your mortgage or your rent in your space. If you're not making enough to, to satisfy your mortgage or your rent on, to retail, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I scale it. You know, when, um, 
we're low in retail and, and not pushing product, that means the mo somebody got to pay for the, the, the mortgage. So therefore, your mortgage should be paid from your retail. That's how I push it. And, and a lot of times when you're done with the client, if a finished product is great, they'll want to know how to achieve that look. Mm -hmm. So they'll automatically ask you what it is that you used on their hair. And that's your, that is your end to sell them, the whole farm. Yeah, but I, I definitely, definitely like what you, your approach to it, uh, Dwight. You know, it's like the, the waiter and they, it's their job to push the cocktail. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they ask you what are you drinking. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a good way. So ask your clients mm -hmm. whether they're using at home. Mm -hmm. Tell them what they need to take, take to the house. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Okay, that was a good question from uh, Rakea King from Chicago. <laughs> we ain't gonna put Dwight into this, but. How do y'all not have email addresses for y'all clients in like 2011? Oh, wow. How are we gonna send out promotions? How are we gonna send out? The White has his assistant checking his email. That's why. <laughs> that is not true. I know how to turn on a computer. I just learned how to do it the other day. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. So I ain't going back to business. Like, you you know, have, this, is, this, is a, this is a whole different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different way of doing business. And I'm a little slow, yeah, mm -hmm. with the abbreviations. You know, I just figure out what uh, B S D M meant. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The oh, yeah. voice man? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's just, it's just a different way of thinking. Yeah. These are the times that we're living. When I started doing hair 100 years ago, literally, mm -hmm. you know, things were different. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't have the computers. We didn't have microwaves. Mm -hmm. So you have to got to change, and I'm doing a little bit better. You know, because I'm just really old school. You know, give me a piece of pencil and a paper. You know, we have the computer, yes, but I have a backup system with my piece of paper, with my appointment book. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the Bible. Yeah. You know, the computer can go down, the, Bible, the, the electricity can go out, but I got that book and I can flip to it and I see the name, it's Mary, her phone number, her appointment. It's there. So it's, it's a different day and a different time and it's a different way of thinking. 